Hey everybody, it's Future Inventions here with my favorite Mac apps. So let's go to Launchpad and start it off. First off, I have Microsoft Office and I use this because it's pretty much what everyone uses. So in school, if I need to give someone a document, then I can just send it to them and it works with like everything. Next in the audio department, we have Audio Converter, and this is an app from the App Store. It's, I think, 99 cents, and it's pretty useful if you just want to quickly convert an audio file, and it really does the job. Next we have File Audio, which is a play on words of audio file and not the kind of file that you put on your computer. But this is a very useful application if you want to import CDs into your computer in a variety of formats and I have used it once and it seems to work pretty well. Next we have iTunes and this is pretty much what everyone uses but I use it because it works with my iPod and I can play music easily and I don't have to bother with other software that's not as intuitive. Next we have web development and I use iWeb with Hype. iWeb is pretty self-explanatory. It's a very simple WYSIWYG web development kind of software and it's incredibly easy to use. You can integrate quite a few little apps and such things with it but overall it's not incredibly feature rich but I use Hype with it so it works out pretty well. Hype is a great application that you can use to create really nice HTML5 interfaces. You can create animations with the keyframes, you can adjust tons of aspects of all kinds of different images and videos, and it is so versatile and useful. So here is the menu that I created for my website. This is the news section. So Hype is just awesome and pair it up with iWeb and you have a very cheap and easy to use and powerful web development kind of thing and it works very well. So next we have electronics. These are three pretty useful applications that I use and let me show you. This is fritzing. It's a pretty cool little application that you can use to create schematics for electronics. There are three different views. There's one you can model something on a breadboard then you can go to a schematic and you can put it on a breadboard and match everything out and then create your circuit board. Here I have a quick little circuit and it's pretty simple. You just drag to make connections and there are a variety of different things that you can put in, sensors, components, and it's just very useful. It's a bit laggy and difficult to use sometimes but I like it. It's really cool. Next we have processing and the Arduino IDE. Processing is used for making kind of graphical, I guess, interfaces, a lot of different things for a computer. So you can make kind of an application for a computer and run something. And the Arduino IDE is based on the same kind of language. So with the Arduino IDE, you can program a microcontroller which is like a mini computer and plug it into your computer and make it do whatever you want. If you're interested in that you should definitely check out arduino.cc and that is a website. So next we have video and I used to use iMovie but now I use Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro is great because it's very easy to use and also very powerful and there's a very small learning curve. Next we have QuickTime Player, which I'm using to record this video right now, so that's why it's useful. In the Graphics Design department, we have Pixelmator, Artboard, Pixel Ruler, Art Text 2, and Post Workshop. Let me just open Pixel Ruler. You can see this is a pretty awesome ruler, and this will tell you how many pixels wide something is. So I can set that up there. So that's 500 pixels, and I can double click it and measure length too. So it's very cool, but I just wanted to get that one out of the way. Now we have Pixelmator, which is kind of like Photoshop, 
and it's very cheap. It's $30 and incredibly easy to use and very awesome. So here you can see this is a thumbnail that I made for one of my more recent videos. And here is my friend's face photoshopped onto a bee barrel. But anyways, it's very easy to use. It has a ton of different tools, very versatile and very awesome. Here we have Artboard. And Artboard is a vector graphical design software. So you can make vector thingies, you can make stars and edit them and do all kinds of cool stuff. I find it very useful for text especially because there are tons of aspects of text that I can edit. I can edit the color, font, outline, all of this kind of stuff and that's what's really cool and very useful for me. It is kind of glitchy but it's still an awesome useful application. Then we have Art Text 2 and this application is just amazing. If you want to create any kind of logo, any kind of text in 2D and make it kind of look 3D if you want to as well, this is definitely the way to go. You can create tons of really cool stuff with this. Here I wrote hello and you can change the font and if I change the font I can mess around with everything. I like this one. I can change the texture. I can make my own textures. I can do something from an image. I can get all kinds of really cool effects. And this is something that I made with this software. So I imported pictures of these little gears and I made them transparent. And then I wrote out the text for my logo. And now I have my robotic inventions logo. So it's very easy to use and very cool. Finally, we have Post Workshop, and I got this from some magazine. And yeah, this was a CD in a magazine. It's pretty cool. It has a bunch of filters for photos, but otherwise, it's not very useful. Next, in social networking, we have Skype and Messages, pretty self explanatory. Then, for CAD, I have Cheetah 3D, which is an excellent app. It's $100, but well worth it. And then we have SketchUp, which is free, but very cool. So here's Cheetah 3D. This app is very powerful and easy to use once you've mastered it. There is quite a bit of a learning curve, but once you've learned how this software works, you can make some really cool stuff with it. And this is a circuit board that I've been working on for an intro that's coming up soon. You can make your own textures and materials and just fiddle around with all of these options. There are some really crazy things that you can do. You have physics. If I go into physics, yeah, you do actually have physics. You can have ropes and things that are soft and plushy. You can have things that are hard and bouncy. You can even make things look so absolutely realistic. This is just amazing versatile software for $100 and I actually did make this which is a kind of smaller version of this and I also did make my intro with this and this little video clip although I did the physics wrong but here you go so I did set up the pins wrong in the physics engine but it did come out really cool and I'm very impressed with this software okay Next we have Google SketchUp and this is just incredibly easy to use software. It's free. So you can make circles, you can make boxes, you can draw whoops, you can draw lines and make shapes. And here I made kind of a 2D shape and then you can take this extrude thing and push things out or pull them in and pretty much do anything. I can take this surface and move it. I can move this surface and take this. I can do all kinds of really cool things with this. And it's pretty useful if there's something that's very easy to model but I can't do it in Cheetah. I'll just do it in this and it works well enough and then I can import it into Cheetah. But you have to pay like $500 to get object files so I have to go online to convert these files into object files which is really annoying but still pretty cool software. 
Next, we have web browsers. I naturally use Google Chrome because it's a lot faster, but Safari does seem to be a bit more optimized. So when I'm scrolling, it does work a bit better and YouTube videos seem to play a little bit better. Next off here in utilities, we have iClean Memory. So if I go up here, we have this little memory thing and then you can click optimize memory to get all your RAM back and free up space. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want it to disrupt the recording. We also have Geekbench, which pretty much everybody uses for benchmarking computers. Then there's SMC Fan Control. I forgot where I got this, but somewhere online. And it's pretty useful because I can turn this on and then turn up the fan speeds on my computer. And then when I restart my computer, then I can boot into Windows and those fan speeds will stay in Windows. So. I don't have to worry about anything overheating in games and if you want to overclock something in Windows then this is a useful tool I don't overclock though for fear of doing terrible things. Next we have Dropbox and this is very useful software. Most people know about it. Basically you put something in your Dropbox, a file, maybe a picture, a document and then you open up your Dropbox somewhere else and you can access your files pretty much anywhere. Those were all of my useful applications, my favorite applications, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.